As modern studies have shown, craniofacial measurements are not as reliable as once thought to predict ancestral relations between populations because craniofacial plasticity is subject to change by the forces of the environment. Frank Boas, one of the pioneers of anthropology, as we know it today, stated as early as 1916 that craniofacial measurements could vary from one generation to the next in studies of immigrants and their children. Racialists of course scoff at this idea. But modern studies like that of Dr. Gravely, in 2003, have vindicated his claims. This has been shown even further by studies such as that of Dr. Couchy that showed that even in the last 100 years, Europeans have been becoming more dolichocephalic while South Asian populations like the Japanese have been becoming more brachycephalic. That means that in ancient times Asians were more dolichocephalic and Europeans were more brachycephalic than they are today. Comparing ancient skulls with modern skulls only show what facial proportions may have looked like, not ancestral relationships. In 2001, Dr. Rhea Lickford showed that genetic diversity and craniofacial diversity had a strong correlation. In 2007, Dr. Manika showed that Africa had the largest intrapopulational genetic diversity and intrapopulational craniofacial diversity in the world. In other words, if you took most any single African population and looked at the variation within that population and it would have a higher variability of genetic material and craniofacial proportions than any other single population in the world. In 2009, Dr. Tishkoff showed that while Africa had the largest intrapopulational genetic variability, the indigenous Americans had the largest interpopulational variability. In other words, Native Americans had more genetic diversity between the various populations of the Americas than anywhere else in the world, contrasted to Africa's within population variability. A correlation of this would be that Native Americans would also have the largest craniofacial diversity between populations in the world. Thus it should be no surprise that studies such as that of Dr. Gonzalez Jose showed that populations like the Algonquin, Iroquois, Sioux, Shoshone, Pima Aztecas, Matacudo, Fuegians, Eskimos, etc. were dolichocephalic while other populations were more like the stereotypes of what a mongoloid look was supposed to be, such as Toltecs, Atabascans, etc. In 2005, Dr. Gonzalez Jose showed how craniofacial diversity in southern Native Americans is extremely high. In 2008, he demonstrated that the same high variability occurred in Northern American natives. Finally, in his groundbreaking study, he used both genetics and craniometric studies to prove conclusively that the huge variation, both in ancient and modern Native Americans did not occur because of putative migrants from other parts of the world, but because of microevolutionary agents such as drift, gene flow, and directional selection. This confirms what Armalegos and Williams have also been arguing all along, when they showed in various studies that craniofacial racial prediction studies were not very accurate especially when trying to predict isolated individuals versus trends in whole populations. In 2003, doctors Williams and Van Vark shot down doctors Jentz and Owsley who are famous for computerizing Dr. Howell's craniofacial database started by one of the original racialists Dr. Carlton Klutz. Their program, Fordisk, is used by forensic anthropologists to supposedly predict races based on craniofacial measurements. In the study, Kennewick and Lucierra, Lessons from the European Upper Paleolithic, Drs. Williams and Van Vark showed how modern Europeans did not look like ancient Europeans even though DNA studies had already shown they were genetically related. Dr. Van Vark was a former racialist himself who was actually quoted in Drs. Jentz and Ousley's studies as showing that modern Asians didn't descend from ancient Asians, much for the same mistaken beliefs proposed by them. The Difference in Looks but this study clearly showed that craniofacial differentiation in different time periods did not mean they were not related. It just meant that they had changed over time. Williams and Armalegos would prove this again in 2005, using four disks to classify Nubian skulls with the famous program. Their results ended up classifying Nubian skulls as Egyptian, Zalivar, Easter Islander, Lake Alexandrina, Norse, Taita, Adaman Islands, Zulu, Arikara, Santa Cruz Island. Anu, Hokkaido, and Atayal. In other words, they classified the Nubian skulls with places all over the globe. So much for accurate predictions. Dental studies by Dr. Turner, one of the foremost experts in dental anthropology, 
a much more environmentally neutral trait than craniofacial variation showed that all ancient Asian and Native American dental patterns still showed an Asian origin, showing modern populations and ancient populations were related. Dental studies are especially important to Warsinski's claims as Dr. Hayden Blitt studied to Lot Ilko specifically and found that all dental patterns were either synodont or syndodont. Both dental patterns are only found in Asia, not in Africa. Hayden Blitt hypothesized a South Asian population based on the syndodont findings. Dr. Turner, a pioneer in these dental studies, ended up finding that her dental studies were inaccurate in their syndodont claims and that all findings, which would include Tulac Ilco in Mexico and Lucia of La Santa in Brazil, were synodont as in descendants of East Asian. The foundational uh, MT or metronomal DNA lineages for Mexican Indians are lineages A, B, C, and D. The frequencies of these lineages vary among population groups. For example, whereas lineages A, B, and C were present among the Maya at Katana Ru, Maya at Copan lacked lineages A and B. This supports Carolina Bonita et al.'s view that heterogeneity is a major characteristic of Mexican population. The A haplogroup common to Mexicans is also found among the Mandy speaking people and some East Indians. Here's an article on the Amitronical DNA genetic diversity among four ethnic groups in Sierra Leone, and we can see in this article by Bruce A. Jackson that the Mandy Carey haplogroup A. And we also find the making of the African mtDNA landscape that not only is the uh, haplogroup A found in West Africa, it's also found in East Africa. Some more of Clive's lay of hand. A tochondrial haplogroup A was not found among East Africans. It was found in one singular East African Ronca from Mozambique. Now remember that Mozambique was a Portuguese colony and Afro-Brazilian workers didn't migrate there. Workers with Native American ancestry. The statistic of 0.2% is a joke. Clive has been ridiculed for making ancestral claims on such low statistics before.